Hello, and welcome to another episode in our Carbonite Ultra U series. In this one, we're going to get into the basics of canvases, how we set them up, how we use them, and kind of what do they do for us. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Now that we're in dashboard, we're going to head over to the configuration tab. Now, one of the things I want to do is make sure that I've turned off my borders and everything because we're going to show you the Mini ME uh, using a multi viewer. Coming over to the Canvases tab, what we've done to the multi screen product is in Ultra, we brought forward the enhancements we made to Carbonite Mosaic. Unlike Mosaic, it doesn't have as many tiles and DBEs, it has to share other resources with the rest of the switcher. But what we brought was the canvas methodology. The canvas methodology is very straightforward. You can have up to two canvases because you need a minimum of two mini MEs to make a canvas. If I use three mini MEs because I have a three projector or a three LED screen, then we're only really going to be able to set up. I've chosen I'm going to use mini ME2 and mini ME4 for my canvas. So the first thing I do is I come in and I say I want this associated with Canvas 1 and I want Mini ME 4 associated with Canvas 1. The canvas is defined by your LED screen. But what if I had an LED and it was, I don't know, 25, 60 by 900. As you can see, the red representation is showing us our LED and where the pixels are going to be viewed. That way you can line up your tiles based on where you want them. You would have a whole bunch of space based on how you've defined the LED and where it's taking the pixels. Now, ease of use, what we found is, well, one, I want background DBEs. They can also be dynamic by doing background DVEs. This will lock two DVEs to my canvas so that my background will always scale and I don't have to worry about not having access and it going into tiling mode. I can also quickly lay this out as a preset. So if I say I want two by one and I hit the create, it's automatically going to put the center in the middle of the screen. So now your X number of pixels in on the LED controller when you're setting up where the LED panels start from. Now this is a little bit more helpful because when you're building effects and moving things around, the concept of it being in the center of the screen makes life a little bit easier. Once you've defined this, it's going to associate DVEs and it's going to allow you to operate these mini MEs gang together at the canvas level. So what do we mean by that? Well, for that, let's jump over to the physical panel. And just like picking an ME, I can jump down and I can pick my canvas. And now when I select a source, in the background zoomed configuration that you set up and define. And so this can either be centered perfectly in the middle, so essentially like a large pillar box, which might be useful in a stadium screen environment, or you may want to change the size at 200. Now we are cropping the video. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's just quickly jump on over. So here, now you're seeing how we have this alignment of our video and how it's perfectly scaled because we set it to 200. But you can see our region of interest has our top and bottom cut off because of how we positioned it in reference to the canvas. Of course, if I wanted the top to be perfect, then I can just reposition using my X and using my, my Y. Most of the video when we do this is going to be center respected. So there, uh, is how we can scale that video across two LEDs or two screens. Because again, if we go back to normal size, this would essentially be like two letterbox or pillar box. Now, if I'm doing this in a stadium 
where I've got an LED board that's 3840 by 1080. Well, obviously I've got my full raster 1080p video right square in the middle. And then I've got on my two sides uh, where I might be filling in my scoreboard data. And that would be coming from, say, a graphics engine where we might be using two channels of CG to give us that pillar box or that layer on top that also when we run wipes or full screen pixel accurate videos will cover across the entire screen. So with that, we're going to head back in to dashboard. If I was to assign a key right now, it's going to scale it across the whole screen using a DVE. What we first have to do is make sure that we use the substitution table that we learned about back in input configuration. So we're going to go ahead, jump into configuration, go to inputs, go to our substitution table. So now I've got my graphics engine, could be a Tessera SE. And here I'm going to be using channel one on Mini ME2. Mini ME2 is going to get CG1. And now Mini ME4 is going to get CG2. Hit the save button. That's how the canvas is going to know that, well, this source, I don't scale across the screens. I tile across the screens. Key two to be our overlay here and we assign CG1. I get that keyer exactly how I anticipate it. But if we were to jump down to the mini ME level, we'll see that CG1 is assigned. And if we go to mini ME4 key two, we'll see that now CG2 is assigned, but the alpha was not. So you have to make sure that you also set up the alpha assignments. You have to tell it what to do. And we make sure that we also add that when CG1 alpha is selected, that mini ME4 is going to do CG2 alpha. Hit save. Now we have our videos and our alphas configured. We come back to our canvas layer. So now we're going to switch away. We're going to switch back. And when we go back to that mini ME2, Everything's good. We go to Mini ME4, and now both are good. Obviously, there's so much more that you can go into and learn from by playing with canvases and your application. And of course, just like everything else, you can control all of this dynamically through custom controls. So if I'm recording a custom control, I can break apart a canvas, put it back together and control all of those functions seamlessly and effectively. Just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, if you have any questions, comments or requests, uh, please send those to switchers at rossvideo.com and we'll try to get to them as soon as we can. See you next time.